What up traders, what up investors, Ken here from the Dyslexic Investor and we're going to be looking at a story which came from investing within the subreddit. Uh, it's actually that, not that much different than the Wall Street bets um, and this guy basically lost 25% of his savings in a week uh, basically going into USO ETF uh, oil uh, leveraged stock um, and then he broke down on what he learned um, and how things just, just don't work out right um, so we're gonna be looking at this full story that he posted here again this is gonna be inside of the description box if you want to look at the full article yourself and deep read through it so basically this user said that he uh, after a long time of uh, responsibly trading blue chip stocks for the modest gains single-digit gains the last week I don't that kind of long a long time for the week okay anyways uh, I planned to get into oil and hit it big. <laughs> Doesn't that sound like uh, something that someone would say on Wall Street Bets? Um, I spent at least 40 hours considering all my possible options. Then on Monday afternoon, it became clear to me. It was time to strike it big. I put in 50% of all my money. All right. The next day, Tuesday morning, was not fun. And we'll look at the chart here in a second. Um, we're actually let's pop up the chart here now. Let's pop up to USO. We're gonna break down the time frame just into like a probably let's do a twenty, and then we're going to not do the extended trading. So here is the week in 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 question. So he's this is Monday. He, this guy was like, yeah, I'm been trading blue chip stocks. I've been making a couple digits here. This is fantastic. I think this is easy. Let me just put in some more money into something that's so cheap and I don't quite understand. So he literally bought into USO probably around 375. Then bada bing, bada bang, it gaps down. It gaps down pretty big to the extent of just that until the close of Tuesday, gaps down about 38%. Um, and again, this is a less than a $3 stock. And I know there's so many videos about there explaining about USO is. So USO is a ETF that uses the uh, futures contract. So I think they trade about 125 to 150,000 contracts within their uh, limit allowed. Um, and they use that to kind of manipulate uh, certain prices. Again, this is a supposed to be a very simplistic ETF that uh, helps, uh, allows investors and that allows uh, traders to get into uh, trading futures without actually getting trading futures. But again, this is a derivative from something like the futures, oil futures, and it created such a hairpin turn when everyone thought that futures could never go to past zero but i guess the bottom is negative forty dollars not zero um and that whole kadoffel blew up in a lot of people's faces and this is a pure look at of what happened when they were trying to roll uh into may futures uh into the following month of june and no one was able to uh take the oil off the books so they were literally giving it away um, because they had just too much inventory and not enough uh, places to put it that's the most simplistic way to put it on what happened and that understanding of that um, again it bounced but then it continued to tear down so let's kick back to the story here so his key takeaway says is says, do not ever buy anything you don't really understand which I don't think people understand what USO is, honestly. On Monday, I bought into USO oil as prices bottomed. You never know what a bottom is. No one has a crystal ball, guys. Um, I thought US would be roll out to April into May, and then they would be buying um, on the upward bottom of peaks of the bottom within the oil prices. Okay. Whew. That was uh. It's it says. <laughs> This is some funny words here. I knew USO was buying futures, uh, but I thought that meant I understood the warnings. Meaning again, there's certain things, people have always said this funny thing I always hear in the market saying, I have lived through four uh, life turning events in the market. Meaning, yes, 
in the last 10, 15 years, you've lived through what people on the news or media call it um, uh, the bottoms of generations or uh, this has never happened in a lifetime again or things like that. It was just a like, hey, listen, if you live on the principle of understanding, hey, please look at X, Y, Z, you have to consider everything. It sounds terrible, like, yes, the probability of aliens coming in and taking our oil, not very likely. But it could happen, right? You never know. So I know that was very extreme. And then the second point here is don't trust third-party sources on the details, not even your own bank. So both Yahoo and my bank, RBC Direct Investing, um, informed that USO uh, most ETFs for the long have been looking for two weeks said that USO is holding April WTI futures. So WTI is a particular futures market within the crude section. Um, this is 100% false. Um, and he put here, um, this is from his bank saying that they owned only net assets of 50% of the futures market uh, in that bracket. So this is what happens when the USO, uh, when the futures markets were closing, looking to roll the Aprils into May and then the Mays into June, that was where the contango happened. You hear that word a lot. And the divergence of prices and not meeting the supply and demand on that side. So he says, I thought this meant that USO had to sell all those contracts to move them into May. On Monday, I thought USO uh, was being paid to take a bunch of the oil, but again, they're, they own such a small, they own a pretty substantial possession in it, in the oil market, but it's not on how exactly how it works. They have to have a, a it's very complex derivative in the sense of how they manage their risk. So I don't think, to, there's maybe four people in the world that understand how the USO ETF is set up um, in the sense of what is on their balance sheets and so forth. So basically, the word ETF is used extremely loosely. This is very true. An ETF like SPY or QZZ, uh, Q, I mean, sorry, ZQQ, dyslexia, is also nothing like all the other ETFs that are attached to tracking blah, 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 XYZ. Um, is just a fund. ETF is a very loosely word. Um, you have to look more at what he says is the prospectus. So basically that means is what is actually understanding of this. So there's a lot of headline reading, uh, not looking into the nitty gritties of things. And this is where he's trying to say like, hey, make sure you know what you're getting yourself into. Um, and he's, after 40 hours of considering all his positions, I don't know if he did all that work. Like, you can put in a thousand hours, but if you didn't look in the right area or to understand on exactly all the different indices that come into uh, the oil section, it's just astronomical. And don't underestimate the number of stupid investors out there. I kind of like this one um, on the sense of there's a lot of, there's a very popular saying when I started trading. Um, about smart money and then dumb money. Um, smart money are the hedge funds and things like that. That's usually what they're categorized because they're the uh, first in, uh, first in, last, and uh, first out before a, a downfall. And the sense of dumb money is this: they just follow it. So if you're ever in a, like in a hedge fund, that is the terminology of like, hey, let's uh, go on CNBC and prop up. XYZ stock and so dumb money can get in so we can get out um, so usually this is regarding on how many people are not the most informed and just read headlines so if you just scroll through Twitter or Reddit or whatever news that you get and you hear oil is at all-time low USO is at generational bottoms XYZ whatever um, people are like oh that's an opportunity to buy but what you should do is take a couple steps back and look at like why is it so low like things just don't happen like that without a reason like um, 
they can look at any pharmaceutical stock when a pharmaceutical stock goes from like 300 to 60 there's usually an underlining issue uh we can look at luck at coffee like they had a completely uh fraud uh issues and i'm going to be doing a video more or less about that and looking at what the hell's going on over there um uh, and they and they also said this is actually goes pretty deep on a lot more other things is don't f with leverage ETFs. In addition to USO, I purchased into a two x WTI tracking ETF. Okay, I am not a fan of leverage ETFs. I know people on Wall Street bets and things like that have made a lot of money on them, but that's very few and far between. Um, basically, leverage ETF is a way of, like, say, if oil moved a dollar and it basically moved three percent, a leverage ETF uses uh, financial uh, uh, complexities uh, to make that and leverage that ETF to two times or three times that move. So instead of making three percent, you made nine percent or six percent. I don't honestly, uh, you can't. The, the uh, leverage ETFs for me. Are a very short-term bet. You're literally betting uh, a week or two weeks out that this something's going to big happen. Because the thing is, is that fund can come uh, completely blown out if it goes one way or the other. Um, because there's only so much capital available. Despite your father's advice, you can't just put be patient and hold everything. Um, so when he bought this particular, which I never have heard of this again, a leverage ETF, I don't recommend any of these again ETFs. This is a bull ETF, and it's just down huge. Like that's just terrible. That sounds. Ugh, I don't even want to. Poor guy. Um, it's time to cash out. After the fund lost forty percent of its value on Tuesday. They froze it, aka halted it, and they released an official press releasing that the ETF was worth about one sixth of it is already uh, market price. So basically this is what happens. Like these ETFs are kind of built um, and sometimes not well tested in the sense of the potential circumstances can happen. Cause no one ever thought that oil can go to zero. Okay. Um, and it, when it did, it just blew everyone's uh, algorithm. They blew their overall limits up. And this is what happens on funds are blowing up. And then you have a herd of uh, cows and crazy people or bulls and bears running to the, uh, the broker to try to get out of these shares. And that, of course, this creates a huger uh, black hole of just liquidity lost uh it's basically just a downward spiral from there <sighs> so the, the he says the biggest lesson in these oil etfs is that nothing is certain in a crazy ass market again this is what we're kind of saying here is like you just don't know on if you want to really invest in something or, or buy into something yes uh you have to have a plan going into it this guy is extremely unlucky in the sense of it really just had a huge turn but the first warning sign was when a lot of people are doing one thing this is just my opinion is i like to be the contrarian for a lot of things so if oil's going down and everyone's saying oh this is a great buying opportunity i feel like whoa 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 this is not really making sense there's something else going wrong here this is just a shot across the bow before something big happens before we hit the iceberg before the asteroid comes in and takes out the city like this is like so this is something weird this is yes things are completely uh not rational at times in the market but this was clearly a point in time where it was like whoa hold up like things aren't making sense here let's just take a couple steps back and it's not making sense i don't want to put my money into this because i don't want to make just a quick buck and flip things um at least but not certain last but not certainly not least this week should have been a lesson for us for all of the marathon size financial uh hidden in every corner of the global right now uh so basically this guy is just I feel sorry for the bad guy, for this guy. It sounds like he really wanted to uh, be, to learn investing and do things like that. And he's kind of pointing back to 2008 crisis regarding the subprime mortgage rates uh, and loans that kind of just swap things around. Um, 
this is not to that same effect, but this is a true economic downturn between supply and demand. So the supply and demand issues in oil is just so extreme right now. And because the the whole world's economy is shut down, guys, like, yes, I could have said the oil would have dropped, but, but no one would have thought oil would have gone past zero to negative 40. Like, okay, like that's, that was unheard of, but now it's heard of. So that is a lesson learned. Just be careful out there. Um, and yeah, so we can look at USO. It's been halted maybe 10 times last week. It's It's been a complete nightmare over there. I really hope if anyone's holding this or anything to do with this, like I, I it's hard to see a potential move higher in the oil markets. Um, but again, like this can go to zero. Uh, again, the, uh, zero is pretty far away still from $2.57. Um, for me, I wouldn't want to touch this. This is just my God honest opinion. Um, and then just looking at the overall downturn of basically since the beginning of the year, it has lost uh, about 80% of its value. Okay. And that was due to the huge downturn. Again, USO could just go completely bankrupt and close the ETF and then spin up a new ETF called USO2 or USO0 uh, or like, why am I doing this kind of trading? Um, this is what happens when you're playing with commodities and a lot of interest instruments that you don't quite understand. Um, going forth. So I just want, hopefully this was uh, somewhat educational. You guys had some takeaways from the overall market. I like to hear if you guys are in USO, did you guys get hurt by the oil downturn? Are you buying oil stocks? Question mark. Um, so forth. Again, guys, I greatly appreciate it. We have a live stream coming out tomorrow. We're going to be doing it at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on Sunday. Again, I would love to have everyone out. We're going to just have a great time, talk stocks, talk economies, look at charts, and just have a great, great old time. Guys, thank you so much for watching. This is Ken from the Dyslexic Investor, and I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Peace.